Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Center video, we're going to be going through how resolution and frame rate work, the future for the next generation consoles, how the technology will improve, quotes from developers, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, this is part of an absolutely ginormous article as well. I'd encourage you to check it out because, quite frankly speaking, if I was to speak about all of this, in the video that I've covered in the article, this video would be ridiculously long. In addition to that, there are a couple of high resolution, or should I say high quality downloads, where you can see 30 frames versus 60 frames per second footage. It's just not possible to do it on YouTube because of the frame rate limit on YouTube. And there's also a whole bunch of images and other bits and bobs as well. So with all of that said, let's start, shall we? So it's kind of a preface. It's worth remembering that neither the PS4 or Xbox One have been out for that long at this point. Um, at the time of my recording, they're barely half a year old. So, it's fair to say that there's going to be a lot of life left to squeeze out of their GPU, CPUs, and memory. And obviously there's going to be multiple different ways that this can be achieved. For example, better SDK, source development kits, um, better and improved APIs better knowledge of the hardware from the side of the developers, maybe reduction in OS overhead, improved drivers, and various other bits and bobs as well. So first things first, what is frame rate? So frame rate, commonly known as frames per second, in its simplest form is the speed and the amount of individual images shown on frame or sorry, on screen in one second. So, for example, if you've got 30 frames per second, it means that 30 unique frames have been shown on screen each and every second. Frame rates greatly depend upon media. For example, most films are filmed at only 24 frames per second. TV shows, usually 30. Some movies are filmed in like 48, and so on. Most games developers want to hit at least 30. On the other hand, uh, 60 is generally preferred. This is not to be confused with, uh, well, refresh rate. For example, some PC monitors now can be 120 or 144 hertz or whatever. And so, basically speaking, the refresh rate is the speed that the screen itself updates. So your traditional monitor or television usually will update at 60 hertz. So basically 60 times per second. Now, in the case of higher frame rates, the faster the frame rate, the less time that the GPU and the rest of the system has to create that next frame. So the more complicated a scene is, the longer it's going to take to draw. So for example, at 60 frames a second, it means that a new frame has to be rendered every 16.66 milliseconds. On the other hand, if it's uh, 30 frames per second, it means that you have 33.33 milliseconds, and so on and so well. So I spoke out, uh, reached out to Robert Halleck um, from Technical Communications Desktop from AMD, and he says that, strictly speaking, his personal opinion is that 30 FPS is the bare minimal uh, acceptable frame rate, but he prefers 45 to 60. So, when you consider that f higher frame rates do indeed help to create a smoother experience, but they do, of course, become very different depending on what's going on on screen. So, in other words, one example I used is if you're just looking at like an uninteresting grey wall and say, you know, you're in a fairly enclosed environment, you're just pretty much pressed up nose first against a wall, and then you go outside and then you start firing RPGs at people, obviously the frame rate and the workload for the system is going to, well, receive a bit of a hit. So, Robert Halleck explains, input latency is the time it takes for user's input to be rendered on screen. Input latency has several factors. How much vSync buffering is being done, more buffering eliminates juddering and tearing, but also increases input latency by a few frames. How fast is the monitor's refresh rate? Higher refreshes will display mouse movements and more promptly, and how fast is the mouse polling rate, or in which case of uh, Consoles, of course, that would be the controller. Higher polling rates will enable mouse uh, more accurate movement and will promptly convey movements on screen. I'm not a gamer that's especially sensitive to input latency, points out, unless it's particularly noticeable. 
nor do I play games which require precise frame timing, for example, Street Fighter. So, now on consoles, or sorry, on PC, there's a couple of different options there's, when it comes to vertical sync. So, there's V-Sync on and off. So, basically, V-Sync off means that the frames will be displayed as fast as possible by the GPU and system. So you could get frame rate tearing here because sometimes you can get partial frames. On the other hand, you can get VSync on. So what that will basically do is it will try to mesh um, and try to hit the 60 or whatever your monitor can refresh at. Unfortunately, you can get some major juddering and issues here because what can happen is, well, the GPU could in one area only go to like 43 frames a second. Okay, so why isn't this an issue on 30? Why don't you get issues on 30 frames a second? And that's why developers lock at 30. Well, the reason behind this is fairly simple. As long as it's multiples of 30, so 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, and so on, obviously depending on the refresh rate of your monitor, you're generally okay. PCs are pushing towards to eliminate this um, there's a couple of pieces of technology, FreeSync from AMD, G-Sync from NVIDIA, and Vazor creating Adaptive Sync. Now, each of these technologies works a little bit differently, but the idea behind them is very similar to basically remove or reduce stuttering and visual tearing. Okay, so what about resolution? How does that work? Well, resolution is quite simply the size of the image. So it's measured in width versus height. So it's important to remember that there's a difference between native and internal. We'll get into that in just a moment. Images now, games now, are primarily aimed at 16 by 9. So the scale in difference between pixels at 1080p is the same for like 720p. So for example, if you've got a game that's running at 720p, it will be 1280 by 720. So you could do this following math. If a developer says it's 900p, for example, you could simply multiply this by 1.78. Technically, it's one point loads of sevens and an eight. If you want the exact number for this, by the way, it is in your article. As I said, there's so much information, it's going to be possible for me to read it all out. Certain games, for example, some indie developers are still in like 5x4 and will have resolutions of like 1024x768 or whatever. So, unlike modern screens, uh, un unlike really old screens, modern TVs, much like PC monitors have for basically forever, um, handle progressive scan. So what this basically means, um, and it's a pretty simple thing for consumers, is that the image is refreshed all at once from top to bottom in a single cycle. Interlace, on the other hand, does odd than even lines. Generally speaking, although this isn't really a concern for you guys now, uh, because almost all modern TVs are going to be 1080p, pretty much if you do only have I versus P, you generally speaking, if you have the option between 720p or 1080i, for games, 720p is slightly better because there's a lot of movement involved. For more still images, then i is slightly better. Uh, once again, Robert Halleck points out, in simplest forms, a monitor resolution uh, is a figure that expresses the number of horizontal pixels versus the number of vertical pixels. For example, uh, 1920 by 1080 means there's... 1920 pixels horizontally and 1080 pixels vertically. Pixel density refers to how tightly these pixels are packed together within the physical size of the LCD. You can increase pixel density in two ways. Shrink the physical size of the LCD or increase the number of pixels in the LCD. But you could also do both, but I'm not really sure why you'd want to. High pixel dentists impact more cl uh, clarity and sharpness in the display, which is why a 4K 30 inch monitor, even at 30 inch, ha is the highest PPI or any desktop display that I can think of at 146 PPI. Moving on, so what about 1080p versus 720p? It's very tempting for a lot of people to say, when I say this stuff, to go to 1080p. Go to open up your calculator or you might be really good at mathematics in your head and you minus the 720 and that's the remainder and then you say well it's only 360 is that all the difference is well no what you have to really do here is you have to times 1920 by 1080 that gives you a figure of just over 2 million um, 
as I said, this is all in the article, but it's going to take me ages to read it all out. You can take uh, 9020 by 1080, that gives you a figure of just over 2.07 million. Then you do the same with 1280 by 720, and that gives you a figure of about 921,000. And that is a fairly large difference. So then if you take the 2.07, and then you, multi and you divide it, I'm sorry, by the 921,000 odd, you basically come up with a figure of 2.25, which is the difference between 1080p and 720p in terms of the sheer amount of pixels, the amount of extra pixels on screen. I've also provided you guys in the article a table comparison which goes which goes from 720p all the way up to uh, 4K, and you can see how many more pixels there are each increase of resolution. For example, uh, 720p to 792p, there's like a 1.21 uh, times greater increase in pixels and so on and so on. You can check that out if you're interested. So now we know what that means. There, it's important to remember that there are, remember how we said that there's internal resolution, rendered resolution, and basically what's displayed on screen. So what does this mean? What the hell is the difference between native and output? Well, the first is pretty simple. It's the resolution the the GPU renders the game in. So, for example, on Watch Dogs of the PS4, it's rendered at 900p. So we know that's 1600 by 900, right? Or 1.44 million pixels. The Xbox One version managed 792 pixels, or 1408 by 792. But if you were to look, the size on screen in terms of the amount of pixels covered on your monitor, there's no difference, right? There's no black bars. Well, what basically happens is the GPU of both systems actually just physically resizes it. it you can almost consider it stretching it. Um, you can think of this almost like saying that you take a, an image with your digital camera. Let's say that that digital camera takes it at 720p. And then you bring it into your PC and you decide to use that. Let's say, for example, you take a, you know, an image of, say, a beach. And you decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to use that beach image as my PC desktop. And your desktop is like seven, is like 1080p, but the image is 720. It basically is stretching it. It's not saying, it's not creating new details. It's basically stretching and interpolating the ones that are there. There are other issues which increase the quality of an image that aren't necessarily down to resolution and they are out the scope of this article. I will do them soon, but I've given a small list including FXAA, um, what type of connection you're using, for example, are you using Component, are you using HDMI, how good is your television overall, how big is it, what's the PPI, so on and so on. So now we're getting into a more meaty area. How does a resolution and frame rate interact and impact one another? And that would be my phone, guys, because I'm really silly and keep forgetting to bloody well mute it. Funnily enough, it was actually Spoonie Kipper asking me, or he's from the channel, asking me if I was doing something regarding Destiny. <laughs> but anyway, moving back. It's important to remember that though a frame rate, unlike resolution, aren't necessarily the fault of a GPU. So, for example, you can have an instance where the GPU is definitely the culprit for the resolution, simply because it's not capable of rendering the scene at a higher amount of pixels, because the higher the amount of pixels, the more GPU um, has to work. Pretty simple, right? Frame rate is a lot different. Frame rate can run into issues where, yes, it's GPU bound, but it can also be CPU bound. So... The, GP, the CPU basically t is telling the GPU what it has to do. So, basically, the G GPU um, is being told, well, you need to create this box. You need to draw this bla bla uh, blade of grass. You need to put this texture. They're basically called draw calls. I'm pretty sure you might have heard of them, particularly if you've been interested in DX12. Now, there are other factors to this as well, which we'll get into in just a moment. But there's also been a lot of emphasis placed on the GPU and the memory bandwidth. But the CPUs also must come under some level of scrutiny. Uh, scrutiny. Both are using AMD's Jaguar CPU, which runs at 1.75 GHz for the Xbox One. Sod knows for the P, uh, PS4. 
I can give you some guesstimates, but they are just that. The basic figures are 1.6 to 1.8. Exact figures are unavailable, at least while I'm recording this. You might be from the future. You might watch this in 12 months. I know exactly. The x86-64 nature and comprised of two modules, uh, four cores each module, so that's eight total. Two of those are reserved for OS. So... In some cases, for example, you have poor optimization from the game's developer or whatever, and this can also impact PCs, for example, uh, the versions of DirectX in 12. Um, so what could happen is you have, with, for example, let's say Core 0 is the main rendering core, and that's at 100% usage, and Core's, you know, let's say 1 through 5 are at 50%. Why are they at 50%? Because the first core, core 0, physically is at 100%. It can't render anything faster, but because the core 0 is the only one doing the rendering, the others can't help. So that's why you're becoming frame rate bound, because the CPU physically cannot keep up. And indeed, Naughty Dog themselves have started to switch towards uh, optimization and multi-threaded approaches. Links to this in the article. Sucker Punch have said that the CPU is the weaker area for the um, PS4 so far. There's once again an article link as well, and there's definitely um, Ice Team from uh, Sony have also pointed out that the GPU computing is most likely going to be like kind of the future. So what else? Are we even finished yet? No, of course not. What else can affect resolution or frame rate rather than CPU and GPU or the other stuff that we've discussed? Well, there's a bunch of stuff. The first, and the one that's been thrown around a lot with the Xbox One, is memory bandwidth. Um, basically, bandwidth is how fast you can feed the GPU, the CPU, and other components with data. So, in other words, if you're unable to push the data to the GPU fast enough, it's basically just not going to be able to render it any faster. Let's say, for example, you have a memory bandwidth of, like, it's just going hideously slow, let's say 40 gigabytes a second. And your GPU produces one T-flop of computing at power. That's a nice easy number, right? But let's assume that you're bandwidth constrained, but somehow you managed to overclock this to 1.25 T-flops of computing power. So you basically overclock the GPU speed, but the memory bandwidth is left alone. Most likely, you're going to get piss-poor extra performance in most cases. Why? Because... The GPU most likely just can't go any faster because it's not being given the data. In other words, it can't do work if it's not receiving the information to do the job. It's that simple. And I've given a couple of examples of this with a few uh, article links, but one of the infamous ones, and it's an article link to Tom's Hardware uh, here. But back in the day, this is quite a long time ago, I don't remember the exact date, but very early... 2000s, I don't want to give an exact date, maybe 99, but I think early 2000s, uh, NVIDIA released their GeForce 256 SDR, SDR stood for single data RAM, and then a DDR version came out a little bit later, um, DDR memory at the time was prohibitively expensive and also quite difficult to manufacture, so anyway, um, they basically released the DDR versions, and in some cases, the performance went up hugely. I'm not talking like 10, 15%. I'm talking massively, like 40, 50, 60, 70%, depending on what was going on with the game, the resolution, and so on. Um, optimization is another factor. You've also got to remember the poor optimization of the hardware, SDKs, and so on. Numerous bad SDKs examples include the Sega Saturn, which had incredibly bad SDK on release. So developers at one point were only using like one... CPU or even one VDP, Visual Data Processor, you can consider it the, the, GB, the GPU, uh, which meant that ports were massively inferior to the PlayStation. There were other issues with the Saturn as well, but one of the big ones was the SDK. Sony had it with their PS3, with the cell processor, just far too difficult to use and configure, especially with a bit of a weird memory configuration and the GPU as well. And so they did get around some of this, but there you have it. Next is RAM. If you don't have enough RAM, for example, let's say you're a PC gamer and your GPU has one gigabyte of memory, but the image 
or all the graphical effects that you try to turn on, take that 1.5 gigs, you're going to get instances where the VRAM is going to constantly be swapped over the PCIe bus. And therefore, despite the fact that the frame rate might appear high at one point, it will tank to the just all the way down as soon as you start to look at other textures that or other things that haven't been loaded into VRAM. So now we're kind of getting almost through. Why do developers create games at 30? Well, there's a good chance you probably started to understand this now. Frame rate doesn't show up at the artwork of a game. It's actually quite interesting because a while back there was a um, poll and some uh, information released by Insomniac Games. Now, there's a blog post to this, and I've linked it in the article, but it says frame rate should be as consistent as possible and should never interfere with the game. However, a drop in frame rate is interestingly seen by some players as a reward for creating or forcing complex setups in which a lot of things may happen on screen at once. As in, damn, did you see that? That was crazy. And they basically said that they don't believe that it negatively impacts the sale at all. Um... They want to hit 1080p, they want it to look as good as possible, um, but they don't really notice the, the sale, there's, there's any correlation between 1080p, uh, sorry, between uh, 60 frames a second and their review scores or how many copies they sell, and, you know, a higher frame rate or a lower frame rate, it just, it just doesn't really seem to make a difference. Nate Fox, who was the director of the PlayStation 4's infamous Second Son, which of course, created by Sucker Punch, stated in a different interview, once again, I'll link this as well, why the title ran at 30 frames a second instead of what a lot of people hoped for. Uh, there was a bit of disappointment, you might remember, from certain forums, um, the 60 frames a second. And he said, well, would you even... What would you expect would go away in a game? Resolution seems to be the obvious thing. That's what he basically asked the interviewer. You know, he, he basically turned the question on its head and asked the interviewer, well, what would you prefer? You need people on the street so it doesn't feel like you're a hero unless you're saving people, you're just some crazy killer. I wouldn't want to compromise any of the particle effects as I think that's what m makes the Delson's powers look alive and real. You can't sacrifice any of those cruising around town and just using abilities. It's a chief joy amongst the game. So that's not going to be it. And we're certainly not going to be cutting down any of the detail in the world. So... I, I respect that. Meanwhile, Dana Joy from Ready at Dawn, in a rather lengthy interview with Kotaku, once again, this is also linked. 60 FPS is really responsive. You know it was going to be this uh, quote. 60 FPS is really responsive and really cool. Um, I'm going to cut down some of this because it's quite a lengthy quote. The whole thing's in the article, or you could just Google that. But uh, we're going for the film it look, uh, look, which is uh, 24 frames a second. But we're going to run in 30 because it feels better to play. Um, if you push to 60, you have a look the way we do. Actually, it would end up looking more like the Discovery Channel, like HDTV type of segment, which doesn't quite have the look or the texture we want from a movie. The escapism and so on and so on and so on. I've got to admit, I've said this before, I, I'm not criticising the game, I think it looks absolutely amazing and I'm not criticising their decision to go with 30 frames a second because obviously they need the extra performance to make the game look the bloody way it does. But at the same time, I don't appreciate his comments. I feel, I mean, even Total Biscuit um, actually pointed this out. I was kind of looking at uh, some tweets from Total Biscuit and he was disagreeing with this as well. Some comments from TB, uh, as well as some other guys in the tech industry, they've said, look, you know what, if, if you're going to do this sacrifice, cool. Like, if it's for the visual aesthetic of the game, if you need that extra performance, if you need that 50% extra GPU time, you know, because that's basically what this is, fine, you know, cool, go for it, have at it. If that's how you feel the game runs better, looks better, but don't tell us that it's going to look more like a you know, Discovery Channel movie or something. Because at the end of the day, it's just objective that higher frame rate plays better. It's just how it is. On the other hand, I would add a, ca I would add a caveat that a consistent frame rate is important. So there's that. So what about the future? Well, this is kind of a bit of a lengthy one. 
But in the future, in the previous generation, the Xbox 360 and PS3, titles generally ran at 720p because that was what most people's TVs were on the release of, like, say, the Xbox 360. Do you remember that? When Jay Allard, top guy, by the way, I really liked the way he interacted with the audience and really responded to uh, gaming fans. He, um, you know, he pointed out that all the Xbox was Focus Xbox 360 was focused on 720p. And that was going to be like the minimum the developers were going to aim for. Blah blah blah. So certain titles, like for example Assassin's Creed, were running at 720p, uh, proper 720p. That would be 1280 by 720. Others like Call of Duty Black Ops one, and they were running at like 880 by 720 and using like funky FOVs and other techniques, so it didn't look like a part of the crap. Um, and also as well, you got like close, really close up FOV. So there were reasons behind that. Is basically because it was fixed hardware. So you've got, on the other hand, to remember that titles like The Last of Us on the PS3 look so much better than the first titles. Like I remember when Resistance and um, yeah, Resistance came out on the PlayStation 3. I basically bought the PS3 kind of close-ish to launch. And I thought, well, it's okay. You know, graphics okay. It's not amazing. Uh, and the same thing for the Xbox 360. I played like Perfect Dark. It looked okay. Certainly was as good looking, in my personal opinion, as like Cameo. That Perfect Dark did have some nice looking levels, though, on the other hand. Um, so what about the rest of it? What about for PC? Well, uh, Robert Halleck kind of gives us a bit of a quote. The push for 4K is probably equal parts because we can and also because it looks better than 1080p. Because 1080p is wonderfully uh, also, and this is his quote, 1080p is woefully underwhelming for today's best GPUs. Whatever part is uh, ultimately responsible, I'm all for it because it's totally smitten with the future has 4K monitors in it. It's hard to understand how tremendous an effort um ultra HD technology is until you sit down and play with one yourself, but my goodness, the sharpness of clarity and the detail are always compared with any other display I've used. Um, he also said, we're already at the limit of the industry offers in terms of supporting advanced display technologies. We support 4K, 4K60 SST over digital uh, display port 1.2a, which is the maximum bandwidth permitted in a single DP cable, and there's also no high resolutions uh, or re faster refreshes on the horizon. We also have FreeSync, which is basically eliminates input latency as a function or synchronization, the FPS on the, the GPU to refresh the monitor. That will appear in retail monitors 6 to 12 months from today, but with any quest for more visual performance, there are only two routes forward, faster hardware and smarter software. The Radeon division is always in pursuit of former um, in a matter of business and the latter addressed by transformative developers like Mantle, DirectX, and so on and so on. So what does that mean? Well, this is why a lot of people are disappointed because we're now, let's be honest, 4K TVs, I don't, I think I might know one person with a 4K TV. I don't know that many. Most people just haven't switched. I don't know many people with 4K monitors anyway. As a of one person I think I know of like a 1440p monitor. I was going to get one but I just didn't see a, a reason to. Um, because I do so much graphic work for the channel. It's just not really conducive to doing graphics analysis and stuff like that. So I don't use one. So generally speaking, most people are still at 1080p. Two years from now... Mm. It's actually very even more interesting because of the VR technologies. Got John Carmack has stated, well, the resolutions and the frame rates we've got just aren't enough to power the games and make them really look good. So it's a bit it's a bit of an up in the air thing. So for PC gamers, 4K is going to be the future, but it's going to require a bit of a beastly GPU, in my personal opinion. For consoles, we've got a long way to go before PS4 or X1 is maxed out. But obviously, there are going to be titles where they have to just render at lower resolution. So for those of you with 4K screens in, say, two years' time, you might be a bit disappointed. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it is. Certain games, like fighting games like, say, Street Fighter, 
they rely, or even Call of Duty, they rely on Twitch reactions. So, for example, three or four frames of animation, you press that button late and you're, you're screwed. You're KO'd. It's done. You know, um, if you're a fighting game fan or whatever, you'll know the moves are literally measured in frames of seconds. So, for example, a, I don't know, a crouching light punch could be like three frames of animation. So, if you get a bit of frame rate stutter at that point, you're boned. And that's one of the reasons that um, lagless monitors were such a big deal. And in fact, for a long time in the fighting game community, people were just like, no, I'm not going to play with a TFT. I don't want that damn lag. Anyway, guys, um, we've barely started the generation. The Xbox One, of course, is getting the GPU performance boost. Sony are pushing the PS3, uh, sorry, PS4 hardware as well. And developers have a long way to go to understand it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this um, video. I would love to have made it longer. There are a lot of parts that I've skipped over. But I didn't want to make this a two or three part video. Because I could have easily, with all the stuff that I've gotten in the article. So I have glazed over, or glanced over some bits, to be honest. But if you want a ridiculous amount of information, do check out the link. And there are so much bits and information there i think you'll be well and truly underway i'll also be let's say going into some other details in 3d graphics in the not too distant future and i want to get everyone onto a st solid standard foundation where everyone knows what anti-aliasing is everyone knows what the different modes are what different renderers are what frame rate is how resolution works and so on and so on so stick with me and so forth anyway as normal, if you could give a like and a share, I would give you many internet cookies. I will see you soon. Take care and bye for now.